Welcome to my favourite albums of every year in black metal. That's correct, we're going from the years from 1982, from the birth of black metal, all the way up to 2022. This glorious year, and it's almost over, so I thought a big bang to end the year, and this is going to be the biggest of bangs. So, pop down below if you have the stomach, if you have the fucking patience, pop down your favourite albums, black metal albums of every year, and there can be repeats, because these are my favourite albums. So, repeat as much as you fucking want. Put Burzum in every single spot. Put Windir in each spot they come in. I don't fucking care. Do whatever you want, because that's what I'm going to do. And we're starting off with the birth of black metal, Venom, Black Metal. That's right, Venom's Black Metal. Now, this is the first and only album I'm going to show because I'm a lazy fucker and it's the only one I grabbed. <laughs> so, show and tell over. Venom's Black Metal is my favourite album of 1982. Um, what, what can you say? What can you say? I recently saw them live play this album in full and it was fantastic. I've seen them before as well, both with Kronos and Venom Inc. I think Venom Inc's a little bit better live nowadays, and that's who I saw play this at Bloodstalk. So good. So many classic songs, so many just fucking great moments. Um, what's the one? Teacher's Pet. Teacher's Pet. What a fantastic song. That one. Really fun um, live. So it has to be. The birth of black metal. Black metal is 1982's pick. In 1983, I'm going to go to Slayer with Show No Mercy. We are going to include Proto Black in this because, you know, Venom's kind of thrashy and Slayer's pretty thrashy. And the next couple of ones are going to be in that similar kind of vein. So Proto Black is allowed because we're going all the way back from here. And Show No Mercy is just one of the best, probably my favorite Slayer album. It has this kind of new wave of British heavy metal. Um, I know they're not British, but it has that kind of energy in the songs as well. Cool rhythms, cool riffs, evil atmosphere, evil imagery. I mean, that album cover, sexy as all fuck. Slayer is influential to the genre. Slayer is influential as fuck, and I adore this album, so it's my favourite of this year. 1984 now. Oh my god, there's too many to choose from from this. i got a list here. we got fucking Bathory's debut. Bathory's debut, taking all the cool, thrashy elements from, like, the Venoms and stuff like that, and then just amping it up. We have Morbid Tales, Celtic Frost. Hello, the best Celtic Frost album came out this year. What else did I wrote down? Apocalyptic Raids by Hellhammer, In the Sign of Evil, the EP by Sodom, which I have a long sleeve for. I could have I could have literally picked anything for this, but I'm going to go with my favourite band and my favourite album, probably one of my favourite albums of all time, Don't Break the Oath. That's correct. Merciful Fate, King D himself. Get your Ds out for D. Because this album is just flawless. Sure, it doesn't sound quite as black metal as a lot of the other picks on this, but it is proto, the makeup, all, I know Kiss do it as well. But you know, the makeup, the imagery, the lyrics, it's all pretty black metal. Music, it's heavy metal, but fuck it, it's coming here on this list because it's just too good and I adore it. And the songs are just magical, mouth-wateringly magical. I'm, I'm putting it on this fucking list. It's coming here. Next up for some more thrashy thrash, we have Creator with Endless Pain. Another kind of proto fra uh, proto black, sorry, album, which I have on CD, but I can't fucking be bothered. In fact, I have all these ones on CD, but I just can't be bothered um, grabbing it. So yeah, Creator's Endless Pain, one of the best creator albums. That early creator period is just in full intensity. Smashing your face into a wall until it's a bloody pulp the whole way through. Flag of hate. Raise that flag of hate because creator's early stuff is fantastic. And this one has that blackened edge to it. You know, if you say stuff like the early Sodom is kind of black and fresh, then this 100% is as well. Same with Destruction as well. Love German Frash. Creator's one of my favorite Frash bands of all time. And Endless Pain is just an underrated masterpiece. People talk about Pleasure to Kill. People talk about Coma to Souls. But no one talks about... Endless Pain, and in my opinion, it's one of the best. 1986 now, we're going to some more Brazilian shit. We're going to the Brazilian shit with Volcano Bloody Vengeance. This is that sloppy, raw, aggressive Brazilian mastership that you come to expect from people like these and Sarcophago and all the other bands kind of like that. One of the most influential albums as well. One of the most furious, one of the most fun and probably my favourite of this year. Actually, it is. That's why it's on this video. There's no probably is about it. It is my favourite this year. It's coming here. 
Go give it a listen if you've never heard of them. You probably have, but if not, check it out if you like some furious fucking thrashy early black metal. Now next up, I had a hard time deciding between INRI by Sarcophago. Just, just as good as the fucking Volcano album. Really cool Brazilian thrash, thrashy black metal. And this is, again, is one of the most influential black metal albums of all time, and I adore it, but... Under the Sign of the Black Mark came out as well this year. And oh boy, I gotta pick that. I got to pick Under the Sign of the Black Mark because it's probably, I'd say from this album onwards is when Black Metal just blew up. From from this album onwards, Elizabeth Bathory, Bathory. It's too good. It's too glorious. I didn't pick the debut for Bathory, so I'm gonna pick Under the Sign of the Black Mark because it is... So goddamn good. You could say the return is the start of black metal, and maybe, like the true black metal. But for me, under the sun of black mark, it hits harder. And next year, oh my god, I'm picking Bathory again, because we don't give a fuck. We're, this is our favourites, Bloodfire Death. Oh my god. Mixing the black metal with the Viking style, epic long songs like the title track. <sighs> Magical. <laughs> eye-exploding experience. It's one of the albums that got me into black metal. Not the actual album, but one of them. And I've loved it ever since. You know, if you want an epic journey, you want a just heavy journey, and this one does both. This one does both. Not quite as evil as Under the Sign, but way more majestic. Feels like you're flying with the Valkyries, ready to just fucking go to war on this album, and that's why I love it. That's why it's one of my favourites of all time, and probably my favourite Bathory album. So yeah, it's on this fucking list. 1989 is probably an interesting one. I'm gonna go with King Diamond's Conspiracy. You're probably all like, shut up. This is fucking heavy metal now. We're into the black metal stage. You picked a heavy metal. F fuck you. Fuck you. Hey, if I'm picking Merciful Fate, I'm gonna pick King Diamond, okay? It's King D. You got it. And this is my favorite King Diamond album. Conspiracy is just one of the most underrated albums in his whole catalog. Like everyone talks about I was going to say The Eye, that's underrated as well. Everybody talks about Them and um, Abigail, which are great albums, but this one, just as fucking good and even better in my opinion. I adore it. So many good melodies. The singing is off the charts because it's King D. You know, you don't fuck with King D. I adore it. If you don't think it's black metal, I mean, really it isn't, but it's proto-black, so fuck it. It's here. 1990, we're going to go with some really fucking heavy shit. Blasphemy, Fallen Angel of Doom. This is just a furious, intense, raw, just war medley time. Um, this is this is great. I love. If you want something to just grab a fucking nail bat and just go smashing some skulls, this is the album to do it. And Gods of War is pretty good as well. It's a bit overhated, but this one just Chef's Kiss, perfection. One of the most intense albums of all time. I actually love the production. Some people don't like it. <coughs> Meltdown. Hello. But I love it. No, I love it. I, I think this is one of the best albums in the genre. And I'm going to continue to enjoy it and play it. And that's why it's here. 91 now. We're getting closer to the golden age. You might think the thrash era is the golden age. And if you do, you're not wrong. But for me, we're getting to the golden age. Master's Hammer with Ritual. This album is just something else. It just has this like progressive like leanings, very strange vocal style, cool guitar, cool screaming and singing. It's great. This Czech band is just off the charts, like really interesting, really unique. So many good albums, so many just interesting albums as well. And this is probably my favorite. So I'd suggest checking this one out if you don't know them. But again, influential to the scene and one of the best. 92 now, 90 fucking two. Burzum's debut. One of my favorite Black Metal albums of all time. And one of the albums that got me into the genre. Burzum was the band that got me into the genre alongside uh, Alcest and Agalog. We'll get to that. <laughs> it's a bit weird mix, but I love my atmospheric black and Burzum just does it like no other. That kind of fuzziness, that fuzziness in the background, Varg screaming, oh, a journey to the stars, ER Lord of the Depths, which is probably my favorite black metal song of all time. That melody is just sublime, 
sublime. I love it. And then, you know, war. This is, <laughs> wow. You, you gotta do it. You just gotta do it. It's a fun album. It's an entertaining album. It's my favourite Burzum album, so it's got to be here. Come on. And the, the EP as well is fantastic. But yeah, debut. My favourite Burzum album. It's coming here. 93, we're going to the Hellenic scene now with Rotting Christ and Thy Mighty Contract. This is my favourite Rotting Christ album. It just has this murky atmosphere, these cool like rhythms and riffs in the songs. The Hellenic scene is fantastic. So many good bands, Varaphorn, um, Necromantia, stuff like that. But Rotting Christ, like the early stuff, just can't be beaten. You know, Trikey of Lost Lovers, um, this album, Non-Servium, some people say non Servium is the best. For me, Thy Mighty Contract can't be beaten. I've got the shirt somewhere. I should have worn it. Instead, I'm wearing Opeth, which is not even related. But who fucking cares? Love, Thy Mighty Contract. Easily the best Ryan Christ album. Questy stamp of approval. 94, we're going to go with Transylvanian Hunger. With a little, little candle and the whole... I haven't mentioned Blaze in the Northern Sky, I haven't mentioned Under a Food on Moon or anything like that because my favourite one is this album. It's probably the most raw they've ever done. Like a lot of people say, a lot of people say it's a bit overrated. I say, fuck you, it's the best. The production just adds to the atmosphere. Between this and Panzerfaust, those two are just, oh, this is a perfection. And this one has always been my favourite, always will be. The title track is one of the best black metal songs of all time. It's beautiful. I love it, and you should too. 95, we're gonna go with Blute Aus Nord and Ultima Fule. This is into the atmospheric stuff, my favorite kind. And this has always been my favorite Blute Aus Nord album. They have so many good albums like the Memoria Vetusta trilogy. You got the industrial stuff, which is fun as well. And then the newer shit, the fucking newer shit's insane. But yeah, I always love the cold atmosphere of the debut. It feels like you are in like, I don't know, you're in Antarctica, you're on some ice caps, it's dark, it's a forever night time, and you're lost in the snow. That's what this album is like. It's terrifying, it's chilling, but it's also quite beautiful. Ultima Fule, uh, it's, it's ultimately fucking fantastic, and it's ultimately gonna be on this list. Speaking of Frosty, 96 is Nocturnal Mortem with Lunar Poetry. I know, it's a demo but it's like fucking an hour long, so fuck you. And it was recently re-released as an album, but I like the early production better. This album, again, atmospheric black, but in like a pagan, more pagan way, the melodies in here, oh my God, my eyes start melting out of its sockets. You just stick some igloos in there. I fucking love it. I love it. Easily my favorite Nocturnal Mortem album. It's close between Goat Horns, though. I do love Goat Horns. And also Voice of Steel is like one of the greatest pagan metal albums of all time. They have a lot of good albums, okay? You could pick fucking any, and I'd say it's good. But Lunar Poetry's always done it for me. It's always hit the nail on the head. And I can't have a best albums of every year without having Lunar Poetry on here. Because it's just that good. 97 now. Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk by Emperor. Yeah, I haven't mentioned In the Night Side Eclipse, which is a masterpiece as well. If you like symphonic black metal and you don't like that, there's something fucking wrong with you. But for me, Anthems has always been better. More bombastic, more chaotic, just a whirlwind of crazy black metal with symphonic flair. Not too overblown. Just just right. It's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It's the it's the just right amount of porridge. You know, it's just right. I think it's amazing. It's easily it if someone said, what's the best black metal album of all time, I'd probably give them this. Yeah, I would probably give them this. That's how good I think this album is. It can cater to people to get into the genre. It's just as good for veterans of the genre. It's anthems. It's I've, se I've seen them play it live as well, the full album, and it blew my balls off. They started rolling down the hill. That's how good it was. I was trying to catch it. My little handy hands didn't quite work, so here I am. Nutless. <laughs> Here I am. Nutless with a cutlass. Yeah, I love it. I want it. Give it to me. 98 for some controversy. <sighs> you knew this was going to come. You knew this was going to come. Um, there's a lot of good black metal albums this year, but my favourite is Cruelty and the Beast by Cradle of Filth. Talk about not overblown to more overblown. Say what you want about them. I don't give a shit. This album's flawless. This album's a 10. I have the poster right there. I love it. I'm always looking at it. Greatest art ever. 
greatest music ever, desiring violent overture, 13 autumns and a widow, goddamn cruelty brought the orchids, Baffery Aria, this album is amazing. It's amazing, and this is the other band that got me into Black Metal. Cradle of Filth, and, well, Cradle of Filth was first, then it was Burzum and Agalok and the other atmospheric bands, but Cradle was the band that got me into them, always hold a soft spot for them, like pretty much every album they've done, the newest one's fantastic as well, um, elitists can say what they fucking want, that the poser shit, I don't give a shit, I'll listen to this and listen to Ghost, I don't really give a shit what you think, or what some other asshole on the internet thinks, this is my list, so suck it. Cradle's coming here, don't like it, eat a bag of dick. 99, something more people can enjoy. Windir with Art Noir. This album is something special. Something special. If you like pagan, atmospheric black metal with just the best guitar and melodies, you'll find none better than this. Art Noir, A Warrior is one of the greatest black metal songs of all time. Just go stop this video right now and go listen to Art Noir, A Warrior. It'll blow your mind. Because it's that fucking good. If you like that kind of style, you'll know by the album cover if you're going to like this kind of pagany black metal style. For me, it's my favourite. So, yeah, I fucking love it. Art Nori Warrior, it's... Every Windier album's great, but this one, it's my favourite now. You know, it's overtaken 1184. It has. So, give it a listen. 2000, we have Dead as Dreams by Weakling. Ooh! This is also one of the highest rated black metal albums, and I haven't got into this until fairly recently, the last couple of years. Um, a lot of the others I've been listening to for years, but this one is kind of a more recent pick. <sighs> it's so good, though. No wonder it has so many good scores and some of the highest scores and, like, rate your music. The music is just melancholic, beautiful, the screams, the mood is just palpable. It has this, like, ethereal-like atmosphere, envelops you in this depressing, not DSBM, but... Similar to that slash like a funeral doom with black metal. It's beautiful. It's one of the best albums in black metal and yeah, it's on this list. Next up to 2001, we have Tara by Abzu. Black and Frash Masters. This album is something else. It's, I love Abzu. My favorite is probably the Son of Tifrith, but another album beat it earlier on. But this one is just as good, almost as good. And some people say it's the best. I can't argue with them because it's on this fucking list. It mixes like these progressive tendencies with the f black and fresh, and it just works so fucking well. It has folky pagan stuff in, it's proggy, it's technical, it's just the screams are just the most insane you'll ever heard. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. I adore it. If you like stuff like, I don't know, Vector, Skeleton Witch, Disaster, stuff like that, I don't know why you wouldn't like Abzu. Or Inquisition. I don't know why you wouldn't like Abzu. So go give Abzu more love. Tara is. It's a masterpiece, and I'm going to listen to it after this video. 2002, some DSBM, Forgotten Tomb, Songs to Leave. This is DSBM, but in more sorrowful, like, beautiful style. Forgotten Tomb is kind of a forgotten band. Hey! It is so moody and just, again, sorrowful. And that's the kind of stuff I like. I like black metal, and I like doom metal. Funeral Doom specifically, or Death Doom, but mainly Funeral Doom, and this kind of has that atmosphere, that sorrowful atmosphere, like a Paul Bearer or a Bell Witch or something like that, mixing in with the harsh DSBM style screams where it's shrieky and you feel the pain and the beautiful melody. Songs to Leave is amazing. Go listen to it. I sure am, and I sure have. Yeah, Forgotten Tomb. Gotta rep them on this list. Number three for some progressive black metal in the vein of, uh, uh, I was gonna say Oblivion. Don't even know one of my favorite bands of all time. In the vein of Opeth. Enslaved, I haven't mentioned Enslaved for a while and there's too many good albums. You know, Bloodhelm, Eld, fucking Elfrost, The King Lavelde, I have the fucking vinyl. Um, but we're talking about Below the Lights. Below the Lights is probably my favorite album. It just has that perfect sweet spot between prog and black. The screams are amazing, cleans are amazing, the melodies are just insane, and it has that cool tribal song which Jamie likes to sing with a oh dee -be -doo, dee -doo -be -doo -be -doo. it's fun. It's a fun album, Enslaved can't do any wrong, all their albums are fantastic, except Monumention. Not big into that. Every other one, love it. This is just happens to be my favourite. So yeah, Below the Lights, 
it's here. Four for some more DSBM. Zasfer to violate the oblivious. This one is just harrowing. It's harrowing. Again, it's sorrowful. It's mournful, just like the other ones, but the screams on it are just insane. I love my DSBM, and Zasfer's had a lot of good ones. Like the, I could pick the early one, Telepathic with the Deceased, but this one is my favorite. And yeah, that's why it's here, because <laughs> it's my fucking favorite. There's not, nothing much more to say. It's my favorite. I've not mentioned before, they're one of my favorite bands. It's fucking coming here. Number five with some Satanic Warmaster. Let's get furry on your fucking ass, boys. Yep, Satanic Warmaster with Karelian Satanist Madness. I've got to mention this. The fucking melodies are just insane in this album. It is one of the best Satanic Warmaster albums, and they have a lot of good ones. I wanted to pick Thimble Winter. Because I love that one. I wanted to pick Thimble Winter as well because that has a cool pagan atmosphere. Which I love and it's a lot different to the others. But this one is just the best. It's just the best. It's mouth watering. It's like that fucking the best gravy on a roast. You know, you just want to lap it all up. <laughs> That's just how good this album is. I know Satanic in the Discord will like me for putting this here. Hello. Hello. I don't think there's mutilation here though. <laughs> Oops. But yeah. Love it. Satanic Warmaster, one of my favourite bands of all time. Fucking coming here. 2006 now, with one of my favourite albums of all time. Blood in Our Wells by Druk. Oh my god. Atmospheric black metal from the Ukraine. And this album is just flawless. It's a 10. It's my only 10 out of 10s. This and a couple others. The mood on it, the melody, Roman screaming, it just everything is just out of this world. Out of this world. Um, there's not, there's not, not much to say about this. It's one of my favourite albums of all time. Might even be my favourite. And it's here. If you like Windeer, stuff like that, you like Burzum, you like anything like that, go give Druk a listen. Every album's a masterpiece. The newest one from this year as well. It was in my top of the year. You know I love them. Nothing much more to say. Blood and Wells. It's spectacular. Seven back to some DSBM with Shining with Five. You know, ugh, Hamstead. Um, the classic... The, Nicholas's screaming on this is just so unique and ear-piercing, <laughs> but very unique. It's in that similar vein of, of like some of the other Polish kind of bands, like Odraza and Fury, that weird kind of screaming and singing, which I kind of love, but Nicholas has his own way of doing it. One of the best DSBM bands, gotta mention Shining, gotta mention Nicholas, and gotta mention this album. If it's not on here, Kate Tron in the chat will just hang himself, and we don't want that. We don't want blood in our hands. All Blood in the Wells, like the previous album. So, got to mention it here. Shining. Five. Helm's Dead. So, from a number five to a number three. Dark Space Free. <sighs> you want to go to the cosmos? Because we're going into the fucking stars, boys. Dark Space Free has this raw atmosphere, just like a Burzum album. But it has these terrifying shrieks in the background of the music, which just adds to the terrifying nature of it. Like, you're lost in space. Like, you've just come off from a spaceship, it's been cut off and you're just floating endlessly into the void. That's the music of this album. Terrifying as fuck, or an alien's on board your ship. It could be it could be the soundtrack to Alien. That's how terrifying it is. I adore it. The melodies are amazing, the screams are fucking ear shattering, and I love them, and the mood is just the best. It's one of the greatest cosmic black metal albums and bands of all time, and each album they have got is amazing. This just happens to be my favorite. It's coming here. Coming on to 2009 now, we have a band I've already mentioned, Nocturnal Morton, with The Voice of Steel. That's correct, I talked about this album already. Uh, I forgot I even put it on the list, but yeah, Voice of Steel. The best pagan um, part of the band. I know Luna Poetry has that kind of atmosphere as well, but it's a lot different. This has way more sound effects, like clanging of hammers, like making weapons, like it's way more pagan-ified. Is that even a word? Paganified? Whatever, we make, we'll make it a word. It's way more paganified than uh, Lunar Poetry, which is more atmospheric, like you're in the woods and it's snowy, whereas this is, you're at a forge, it's a dwarven forge, fucking Valkyries flying everywhere, you're ready to go to war with a giant fucking hammer. That's this album, just as fucking good as Lunar Poetry, if not better, by some people's standards. For me, I, it's hard, it's hard. I like Lunar Poetry a little bit more. But this is still fantastic, 10 out of 10 album, and, you know, just like Bloodfire Death, it's in that similar vein, if you like that, you should like this. 
it's great. 2010s now, 2010, we're starting with Black Gaze. Uh oh, someone's gonna go mental. Alcest with a Kale de Lune. I love this album. I love fucking love Alcest. Oh, so good. So goddamn good. The mood, the melody, Niche is screaming. I've seen him live and he played as Cali de Lune Part 2 and it blew my head off. Holy fucking shit. His screams are insane. His screams are actually insane. Like, shit, I actually got goosebumps by seeing them. One of the greatest bands on this entire fucking list. Don't care what you say. Don't give a shit. Don't give a flying fuck. One of my favourite bands on this entire list. Um, if you pass them off as opposed to stuff just because it's a bit shoegazy, then you're doing yourself a disservice because the music is beautiful. It's just harrowing when the screams kick in. It's melancholic. It's, it's beautiful. The word is beautiful for this album. And the whole discography, to be honest, Kadama could also come up. And I, it might do. I don't actually know. But yeah, this album especially, it's one of my favourites of all time. It's in my top 10 albums of all time, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's coming here. 11, we're going back to the stars with ominous doctrines of a perpetual mystical macrocosm. Yeah, try saying that really fast. Inquisition. Gotta have some Inquisition here, and I'm more, I like all Inquisition, but I'm more into the more spacey Inquisition stuff, which I know is all of it, but from uh, Nefarious Dismal Orations onwards is like my, my kind of style. Um, which is probably going to trigger people because a lot of people like why uh, not Wyatt fucking Bryce talks metal. He loves the first two, and I know some people in the Discord like the first two more, which is cool. They're good for me. Ominous is best. Ominous is fucking better, and so is the newest one, Black Mass from Mass Grave. Holy fucking shit, that slaps, and would have been my album of the year, but it came out in like December or some shit. Durr. Yeah, Ominous Doctrines just has these hypnotic melodies. That just gets stuck in your head, and you've got those, that froggy croak, which is just so good. So good, it's so unique, it feels like an alien is actually singing to you. Great cosmic black metal, love it. Right, in 2012 now, we're going for some Enel Nafrak. That's right, some Enel Nafraks with Vanitas, which is my favourite Enel Nafrak album. Close to uh, Under the Constellation of Black Widow, but this one's a little bit better. The screams at the end of some of the songs that last for like 10 minutes, just... Every song's a banger, every song's catchy, every song has a chorus I want to sing along to, which is insane for black metal. Mixing black metal with industrial, and just, it's chaotic as fuck. It's actually chaotic as fuck. I love everything they've done. Go check out every single album. Codex Necro, amazing. Amazing, that's the heaviest one. And this Constellation of Black Widow is just... furious, and the most black metal they've done. This one's still black metal, but it's a bit more on the catchy side. I don't really care. The songs are good. I love them. It's coming here. 13, time for some epic black metal with Summoning and Old Morning's Dawn. <sighs> Summoning. You got the trumpets coming out. <laughs> Could pick loads for this. Stronghold was my favorite, but now Old Morning's Dawn taking it over. The folky nature of it, just like some of the bands I love, like Winterfell of Eldwin, shit like that. In... in encroaches in the music is that the right word i don't know quest he's quest he needs some alcohol in his system to function I i'm running on water what's going on um but yeah old morning's dawn has the more folky approach to things which some people may not like i think it's fucking fantastic um just the song old morning's dawn as well is just the most melodic song i've ever heard Beautiful, it's amazing. If you want to jump into Tolkien's world, this is the album. This is the songs to do it. Summoning is amazing. You could pick any album for this. They're all fantastic. I just happen to like Old Morning's Dawn the best. 14, we're heading back to the stars with some weird shit. Spectral Law with the album Free. So we've had two albums on this list which are just called Free. How weird is that? Anyway, and they're both spacey. <laughs> What's going on? But yeah, this is amazing. Spectral Law is kind of like Mercognitum with like the cosmic black metal, long songs, furious drumming, furious rhythms and riffs, takes you to another world. And this album sure does that. This album does it and does it hard. Oh, it's one of the best cosmic black metal albums of all time. And that's one of my favorite genres of all time. So you know Questy's gonna give it two thumbs up. You just know. Time for something random. Front Shween by Marduk. Probably didn't expect this here, but I love this album. It's a bit more on the catchy side to a lot of other Marduk albums, but I think that's good. You know, I think that's actually good. Some songs in here, like the Blonde Beast, 
amazing. I wanted to put Panzer Division Marduk on my list, but another album kicked it out, so I'm going to give some love to Marduk here with Front Swing, which is easily one of my favourite albums um, in their discography in the last, I don't know, say, say the last eight albums they've done. This is my favourite. Way better than Victoria. And I hope the newest album comes back to this kind of style, because I love it. Catchy, but still furious. Front Swing. It's very, very good. 2016, now I mentioned them. Mare Cogniton with Luminiferous Aether. Off to the stars again with the best cosmic black metal band. Like, oh my god. This band and this album takes you places you don't expect. Like, straight through a black hole, straight into the cosmos. Eldritch demons are ready to just fucking rape you. <laughs> that's how crazy this album is. And that's what I love. That's what I love. I really need it on CD. I don't have this one on CD. I do have Phobos Monolith. I do have another one I'm going to mention <laughs> soon. Um, and I do have Solar Paroxysm, but I've, I don't actually have this one. Um, I know it's going on Discogs for like fucking 30, maybe no, like 50 quid or 100, something ridiculous. I'm not paying that for one CD. Get your fuck right off. But I do want to get it eventually, and yeah, I love it. You like Cosmic Blackmail? Do yourself a fucking service and check this album out. 7, 2017, we have Terra Damnata by Nightbringer, more furious, crazy, and interesting black metal as well. Kind of with Cosmic Edge as well. Nightbringer has this just intense energy about them that I love. Screaming is just perfection as well. Another underrated band that I don't think I've mentioned at all on the channel, actually. Aside from this one video, so yeah, there you go. There's a random mention for Nightbringer on this video. It's fucking good. 2018 now, we're getting close to the end. Druk again, with they often see dreams about the spring. I know Jamie had this like second to last. He's fucking got rocks in his head. This is one of my favourite Druk albums. It's very sorrowful, very meaningful, and just the melodies are just beautiful. Um, I prefer it to the one this year. I do love the one this year. I think it's amazing. It's still a 9 out of 10, but this one, the one previous to it, is just even better somehow. You know Druk, I got a bias for Druk, one of my favourite black metal bands of all time. So you know they're going to make multiple appearances, and here it is, another Druk appearance. It's amazing. 2019 now, and we go with Sayor, with Forgotten Paths. This album is just beautiful. This is folky, atmospheric black in the lines of, say, a Druk, or, or Elderwind, and stuff like that. But this one just has so many catchy songs, and even have a song with Niege from Alcestin, so you know I'm gonna like it. You know, if it has Niege in, I'm gonna fucking love it. I do like Soul's album from this year, but I just think Forgotten Paths is just fucking better. <laughs> better in every way. And give it to me. Love it. Love the guest spots. Love the melodies. Love the folky nature. Sale's just amazing. 2020 now. Three albums left. 2020 is Wanderer's Astrology of the Nine. Oh my god, this is a split album between Mercognitum and Spectral Law, two bands I've mentioned before. And they come together for a concept album about the planets, and it goes, each song is a planet, like Pluto. I go to Pluto straight away. You know what I mean. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, all that shit. Each song is that, and they're all like 10 minutes long, 15 minutes long, and then they go together for a joint song at the end with Pluto. It's 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 magnificent. It's over two hours long. It's fucking long, but it's one of the best. Uh, in fact, it's probably one of my favourites in the entire list. That's how good it is. So if you like Cosmic Black Metal, give this one a whirl if you have enough time. 2021, eh? So this one... <clears throat> when I did my end of the year list, I gave it to Aesop Trillium Dive Requiem for the Serpent Telepath, which is an amazing album. But I retract that. My new favourite is Bell and One by Aquilus. This, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. I loved Greasius, and a lot of people say that's beautiful, and it is. Um, but this one's better for me. This one is better. It just has, like, these passages which are more classical in nature, in between the screaming, and it just adds to the atmosphere, adds to the beauty and the nature of it. It's hauntingly beautiful. That's the word for this one, hauntingly beautiful. You feel like the trees are just going to wrap around you in the night time. It's, it's creepy. It's beautiful. It has those classical elements. It even says on the album cover that it's like Opeth mixed with classical, mixed with Burzum or whatever. And I'm like, hell yeah, that sounds fucking insane. And it is easily my most played the last couple of years. And I'm glad I've got it on CD. So yeah, 
Bell and One, Aquilus. It's my favourite. So now it comes to this year, and you've seen my list. You know this one. Blute aus Nord with um, Disharmonium Undreamable Abysses, the Nightmare Fuel album, the most terrifying album on the entire list. Yeah. This one does feel like Eldritch Demons are ready to tentacle slap you. And it'll be a bad time. <sighs> Mentioned it before. Terrifying. Crazy. It, it's not even screaming in it. It's not even like Black Metal screaming. It's more like it's chanting. Like the demons are actually going to be summoned into your room. And don't listen to it at night. Actually, no. Yeah, listen to it at night. So you get the full effect. Love it. Easily my favourite this year. And there you go. That is it. Every Black Metal album... My favourites, starting from 1982, I'm pretty sure, I can't actually remember, let's see, yeah, 1982, with this fucker, all the way up to Blue Eyes Nord's new album. So, let me know down below what's your favourite album of each year, starting with 1982, what would you change on my list, do you agree with some, do you hate some, are you annoyed that, like, Al said some cradle filths on here, rabble, 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 let me know down below and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.